So today, we're going to look a little bit deeper into the process of of going about um, getting yourself a side hustle. And we're going to look a little bit inside the framework of Simon Sinek. He's one of our favorite authors um, in Start With Why. He's got great TED Talks. But he has this theory called the golden circle. And inside, if you imagine a bullseye, inside is the why. And then the next circle going outward is the how, and the last circle out is the what. And he says the fault of most people is that they start with the outside. They start with the what, and then they say the how, and then, oh yeah, this is why. Whereas he's saying you start with that why on the inside, that his work with the most successful people in the world, leaders of giant companies, of just uh, really happy people in general, start with that why, and they build out. Yeah, absolutely. I think starting with why is such a good anchor point. It creates such a solid foundation because inevitably when you get into a new venture, a new side hustle, even a new project at work, you know, inevitably you're going to run again, run up against obstacles and roadblocks. And if you don't have that strong why to anchor you in, it's like a tree. If a tree didn't have strong roots in the ground and the wind swayed, the tree would fall over. <laughs> so the why mm-hmm. is your root into the ground to make sure that you know why you're doing this. So when whatever wind comes, whatever storm comes, you can hold true to that. So I love that we're following that framework today. Why, how, what? Yeah. And I'll give you a really great example. I'm actually part of this wonderful coaching program to be able to learn the craft of YouTubing. I'm growing the Good Egg Investments YouTube channel. It's super fun. I love doing it. I love speaking. I love creating, um, getting to do a little bit of all these new things. But um, to, but to be a part of a program, this is a big tip in creating your side hustle. Maybe think about joining a coaching program, joining a mentorship program to kind of fast track it. But there's an individual in this program who's... Um, He's getting close to retirement age. He started a YouTube channel about a year ago because he saw the signs that his industry was soon probably going to be replaced. His job was likely going to be replaced by new technologies, whether that's AI or automations or anything. And at his age, he just saw the writing on the wall of how difficult it might be to find another job in that same industry. And so he started a YouTube channel. And just the other day in our Slack channel for this program, he expressed deep gratitude because he did in fact get laid off. He had probably a why. Like, I I want to do this because it's bringing me meaning and it's also going to serve very vital purpose in my life. So a great example. It can happen to anybody, anybody. You know, it makes such a big difference when you have to do something versus when you choose to do something. Because, mm-hmm. you know, no none of us wants to be faced with that decision of having to create this side hustle when you have to do it. So do it now when you're playing, when you're when the stakes are low, when you don't necessarily need that extra stream of income. But here's what it does is, you know, let's say, let's take the YouTube example or AI, you know, either one where maybe that's not core to your work at your job. So you might not have a project um, or an occasion to come across and create videos. Even if you asked, it might take some time to get you assigned to the right department and to be able to do a project like that. But maybe you have this internal itch to try something or to get to know AI or YouTube or podcasting or anything else like that. And you're like, you know, I just, I have this idea and I just want to try it. And maybe the purpose isn't money at the beginning. Maybe it's more just, you want to try something, you want to learn it, you want to see if you can do something with it. I mean, this reminds me of Mark Rober. He's one of the premier YouTubers. He creates all these oh, science videos. Oh, one of my favorites, especially oh, as a parent. So oh my fun. gosh. Yeah. Oh, so fun. But talk about a great example of this, right? Like he cre- started creating these uh, videos back when he was working at NASA and then Apple. And he was just doing this on the side just for fun. He, he used to, he started out creating videos about how to create these um, fun Halloween costumes. And he didn't think anything of it, but his, his videos, some of them went viral. And then he got interviewed on some, um, you know, good morning, so-and-so, I don't know which one, but you know, he got, he got some press around it. Right. And then it told him, Hmm, 
maybe I should keep doing this, but he wasn't making any money around it. But look at him now. He's got a huge YouTube presence and his own company, which is a spinoff of that. So lots of things can come from it. If you just follow that passion, as we talked about in our last episode, follow that passion and just play, just try something. Let's say that you're at a point where um, you're like, okay, I'm committed. I want to find a side hustle. I don't yet know what it is, but I know I have my why. I've grounded in my why. And now I want to get started. So where do I start? Um, So what would you say, Susan? What are some of the things that you might uh, do to get started with a side hustle? Yeah. Well, again, you started with your why already. Um, You've written out why you want this. You've written out some of your goals, your long-term goals with this. Is it to monetize? Is it to get a certain amount of money in a certain number of years? I would say the next thing is kind of do an audit of the things that you love to do, the things you are already passionate about. Because there are things that you're doing that other people need and want and you do just naturally likely. So kind of take a big audit of just things you love to do and make a big list. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, if you get stuck, um, I always go back to what did you want to be when you were a little kid? And Because as you grow, there's all these society pressures and demands and what your parents wanted you to become and all that stuff. But think back to the core of, you know, in those days of innocence, before you had all those pressures and burdens, what did you want to be? And there's probably, maybe it's not that thing exactly, but there's some elements of that that are still within you that are at the core of you. Like, let's say somebody told you, you're really good at talking to people. And you're thinking, well... What do I do with that? I don't, I don't know. Like what kind of side hustle could that be? I just, I like, we all talk to people. Yeah. Right. (laughs) But then you start to dig in, you start to research, you start listening to podcasts or watching YouTube videos and seeing the common threads of other people who might be really good at talking to people. And you say, oh, this is what they've done, or this is what they're working on. Could I see myself doing that? How could I do that? And it's just this, this, um, this uh, area of just play and exploration. And is really as much as it is starting a, a side hustle, it's a, um, a process of self-discovery as well. I think we can get caught in limiting beliefs when we look at what other people are doing out there. And Ooh, we can yes. say, well, there's already a hundred podcasts about side hustles. There's already all the videos about this crazy little drum that you just bought. But instead <laughs> say, oh, oh, wait, I'm already limiting my potential here. Reframe that belief. This is a great designing your life principle of reframing your limiting beliefs, getting the practice of catching them and rewriting them. And, and instead say like, wow, they've already proven that there is is a need for this topic, Ooh, that this is a topic yes. that people are interested. And I am going to do something similar without having to guess if this is you know, something people are even going to want to listen to. And I'm going to show up to my group of people that are ready to listen to my perspective on it. Uh, maybe that is the beginner perspective. Maybe it's someone you know, with a little bit of maybe your busy mom, for instance. I mean, that's a lot of the videos that I'm creating. I'm like, here's real estate investing and I'm a busy mom. <laughs> and I don't see a lot of that being talked about out there. So there's always something that you can show up and you can do and look at everything that's been done before and say, this is great. This is such good information for me to be able to move forward here because they've proven that this is a valuable topic. Oh, I love that so much, so much, because that's such a, it's such a trap that you can get caught in is thinking, oh, I I don't have anything worthwhile to contribute. It's all already been done. But each of you who are listening, each of you has your own unique voice, your own unique experiences. And so I love that. Take that and turn it on its head and say, this is my proof of concept. It's already out there, which means it works, which means other people are investing their time and energy into it. And so it's, it's a proof, it's proof that I should too. Love that. Yeah. Well, so some other side hustle ideas that I've come across over the years, I really like that people jump into being a virtual assistant. And I think that Mm -hmm. you can learn so much about 
everybody's different businesses, especially if you kind of cater to smaller, you know, one person, a solopreneur who just needs 20 hours a week, who just needs 10 hours a week, you're learning the insides of those businesses. So becoming a virtual assistant is a really great way, really flexible, often remote positions, that sort of thing. I definitely want to get into the real estate because that's a great side hustle and lots of different ways to get into real estate. But one other one I wanted to add was around pet sitting, dog walking, and house sitting. And the reason I wanted to highlight this one is because one, it's fair, it can be fairly easy to get something like a dog walking service in your neighborhood off the ground. You might post it in uh, you know, a neighborhood forum or something like that, and immediately you'd have some clients, right? Um, but it might lead to more than you think. And so I know somebody who actually, she travels, she's a full-time digital nomad and, you know, she's living for free. And so there's lots of different ways to go about it and to be creative around your side hustles. Okay. But with that, I definitely want to get into real estate because this is our favorite by far. So Susan, just give us the basics. If you wanted to, if somebody is listening, wants to start with Airbnb, how do they, do they just go to the website and sign up or what's that process look like at a high level? Yeah, I think that starting with the Airbnb website is great. They're going to give you a lot of sort of like guiding you through those first steps. Um, But I would also think about like, what what about your house could you offer to other people? Do you travel frequently? What is your travel schedule? Do you have... Most people start Airbnb by renting out sort of a a side bedroom or a different unit within their own home. Maybe it's an ADU. Maybe it's a bedroom above a garage. It doesn't even have to have a kitchen these days. You can rent out just a bed and a bathroom. And, and that's it. Um, as long as you, of course, tell tell your renters about all of that. Um, other people even continue to do the very house sharing model where they welcome someone into their home with them. They give them one of the bedrooms. They say you can use the kitchen or not use the kitchen, whatever your preference is. So do kind of a home audit. Um, for us, we don't really have a great space that we could share with anyone else. Um, we have a pretty small home. so But we do like to travel. We go stay with grandparents often when we travel or we're doing camping and rafting trips. So we're not exactly paying for like expensive Airbnbs when we travel. So to be able to rent our home out while we go is a great way for an annual declutter fest. I, <laughs> let me tell you, getting it set up to Airbnb takes about a weekend of like locking our personal belongings Oof, into closets. Yep. <laughs> um, there's all kinds of little tips that you can have along the way. Um, and setting it up to be like a really nice, lovely home that people can stay in. We've got the kids supplies. We've got all the notes. and We've got the guides. You know, I, I really enjoy providing that service to someone. The town that I live in is extraordinary and I love facilitating someone else exploring that town. So think about what parts of your home you could offer if you think that Airbnb might be a good fit for you. Yeah. And that's such a good reminder that a side hustle doesn't always need to be a hustle and a grind. Um, I've had way more side hustles that have failed than I've had side hustles that have stuck. So if you try one and it doesn't work, don't be disheartened. Just know that there's never failure. There's only feedback. And then you move on Mm -hmm. to the next one and get closer Mm -hmm. and closer. It's so important to think of failure that way and everything we do. Yes, absolutely. 